Hello, in this lesson we are going to talk about ledgers. We mentioned them before, so what exactly is a ledger? In general finance, a ledger is essentially a book that holds transactions. In the case of blockchain, we'll talk about one of its, oh, the most popular implementation blockchain, Bitcoin. So in the case of Bitcoin, but this is the same principle for any sort of decentralized distributed system on blockchain. It is very similar. It is essentially a database. So a ledger, a Bitcoin Ledger is nothing more than a database, and this database stores all. Ooh, that didn't go quite right. Let's just get rid of that. Stores all the transactions that have ever occurred within that system, whether it's Bitcoin, Ethereum, it doesn't really matter. What, whatever it is, it stores all the transactions. On top of that, it is public. So anyone can go and view it. A great website to view it is blockchain.info. Free to view for everyone, as long as you have a internet connection. And it is distributed, it is decentralized, so no one person can take it down. That that is what makes that is what make makes blockchain and its implementations so good is the decentralized nature of it. So the ledger might look like the structure of it, this is obviously a very small ledger in comparison to the actual size, might look something like this. So we might have an ID column, we might have a sender column, receiver column, so in the case of Bitcoin, sending and receiving Bitcoins, and let's say we have a timestamp. There is more information than this, but this is just again a simplification. Would say the ledger at the moment has three transactions, so this is early days so 001 002 003 and i'm gonna say well let's just use normal names so bob sent something to tom and tom sent something to me and my name is frahan if you did not know that and frahan sent something to bob and one thing I literally just forgot is the actual amount that we're transferring. That is actually quite a crucial part. So I'm going to split this into two. So we'll have amount and we'll have timestamp. So the amount, it doesn't really matter what the amounts are. Bob sends half a Bitcoin. To Tom, Tom sends 5,000 Bitcoins to me. Very well done, Tom. And then Frahan, aka me, I just send a measly 0 0.001 Bitcoin because I want to keep them all for myself. And the timestamp we can say is 1st of January 2017. This is say occurred on the 10th of October 2018. And this one occurred on, again, the 1st of January 2025. So yeah, there's quite a big gap between these transactions, but you get the picture. It is a public database which holds all of the transactions that have occurred and will occur obviously they don't hold them at the moment if they haven't occurred yet but they will hold them and it's free to access by anyone as i mentioned 
a great website to access them is blockchain.info. Nothing more to it than that. Simply a open, public, decentralized, distributed database of all the transactions that are occurring within that blockchain implementation. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. And as usual, I will see you in the next lesson.